On today's episode of Locked On 76ers, we discuss the 12 and 12 team and the state of where they are right now. Things don't seem all that great. We'll discuss it all next. What's the problem right here? Locked On 76ers. You are Locked On 76ers, your daily Philadelphia 76ers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by Prize Picks. First time users can receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100 with the promo code locked on. That's prizepicks.com, promo code locked on. What's up, D? What's going on, man? Welcome back home. Slept well last night, bro. Slept well. <laughs> uh, as you deserved that after that long trip again. Uh, so I'm, I'm glad you're back home. Glad you uh, got some rest and we get right back at it. A few days off for the 76ers, uh, but we have a lot to talk about before they take the floor again on Friday against the Los Angeles Lakers. First, we get before we get started, I want to welcome everybody and thank you for listening. I'm Devon Gibbons from 97.5 Father Fanatic Radio in Philadelphia, alongside my co-host and partner from the Inquirer.com, Keith Pompey, uh, does a fantastic job covering Sixers. The, uh, beat writer that he is and thank you for making locked on 76 is your first listen every day and remember locked on 76 is, is free and available wherever you get your uh podcasts uh, on all platforms including youtube at locked on 76 as well man 12 and 12 uh they are now after the three game trip that they had where they went winless looked like it was at least a promising trip that may be able to tell us something and if it told us anything it, it is that they still have some questions that need to be answered for this basketball team eight and six with James Harden out of the lineup through those 14 games he comes back and uh, look it may have been him it may not have been him but he certainly played a part in that loss on uh on on Monday in Houston so Keith let's start off with the as we start about the talk about the state of the team later on we'll get to the pairing of Joel Embiid and James Harden and if that works or not works or are we talking about it too soon and, and also look ahead to the seven game trip beginning with the lakers on friday the state of the team man where they are right now we know they've had these injuries to their three stars tobias harris missed a couple of games with the hip issue had to leave a game earlier uh, because of the the dealing with an illness so this this team right now i i didn't expect through 24 games that they would be at 500. i would i would have told you they would have probably been uh, somewhere in the top three still with the Milwaukee Bucks and the Boston Celtics, where their numbers look pretty good overall during the regular season. Not so much. They've had some good games. They had some really good wins, but they've also had some really bad losses. They've had issues with the personnel trying to figure it all out. The state of the team right now, Keith, especially with you being around it on the road also, where, where, do, you, where do you look at them right now at this moment, at this point of the season? You know, it's weird. It's, it's, it looks like the state of the team is a – they got a lot of pieces who really don't fit right now for what they're trying to do. But I also think the biggest problem that they have is that they keep making the same mistakes over and over again, and, and they keep playing the same way. You know, it, it's funny. You, you talk to certain guys, and they all say, you know what, you know, all we have to do is just try harder and, and, and play smarter. Right. That's what they say. Try harder and make play smarter. Try harder comes out on the defensive end where it's all about effort and then play smarter is, well, guess what? You know, like move the ball, have perfect ball movement, get other people involved, do great execution. Right. Yeah. But it just seems like whenever things go wrong, they don't do that. And it also seems like they keep saying try harder, but it just seems like you know, they're, they're giving up easy layups. They're giving up baskets in the perimeter. Now, they may sustain that for – they may, like, you know, cut that out for a little short pocket of games, but then all of a sudden it goes right back to it. So, you know, when you look at the state of this team, it says – you look at it and you say it's two things that are easily correctable, but they keep doing it over and over again. And the more you look at this team, it looks like a team that's old, right they can't keep up with the young boys and and with that 
they they you know it, it they're losing a lot of luster because of that. Yeah, the one that really stands out to me with what you just talked about was the uh, you know, obviously the effort, but the second part where it, it's making sure that you you execute things on the offensive end, playing smarter. Uh, when you execute on that end, take the good shots and understand what time and situation is uh, on that end of the floor. The other part is just the turnovers. They come in a really bad time. Sometimes they come in bunches where it allows the opponent to take advantage of that on the other end. Even if there's not a bucket by the opponent on the other end, what they do is they take away from a possession from themselves. So you don't give yourself another opportunity to score the basketball. You turn you turn it over and and all of that. The 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 effort, yes, I, I do agree with you on that sometimes that, that that can be a problem. But when it comes to the other part of it, especially on the offensive end, just playing smarter, that, that that's a big reason for me, the execution and the turning over of the basketball. And then even the communication, when you talk about playing smarter on the defensive end, the communication of things where Guys, sometimes to your point, it seems too easy in the paint where guys are getting past their their defender, the Sixers, and and getting to the bucket and finishing some easier looks than than you would expect in what they should be. So, I agree with you. Those are some things that can be can be cleaned up and worked on. But should we be talking about them twenty four games in? And you know what I mean. So that's that's the tough part about it all that it's still happening at this stage of the season something that may be correctable, but should have been corrected before. I agree with you, my man. I agree. Yeah. So plenty, still plenty of time, but how many times are we going to say plenty of time left in the season with 58 games on, on the schedule or yeah, 58 games on the schedule. All right, man, let's uh, take a quick break. We come right back and we get into the guys who are really the head and, you know, the head of the offense. And that is with James Harden returning, he and Joel Embiid, the pairing. A lot of people weren't sure about it when the trade went down, uh, but they've had a lot of good times out there on the floor. Uh, are they a problem? And uh, this does this thing work? We'll break it all down next right here Locked On 76ers. Let's talk about prize picks, right? You know what, D? I know you don't really like prize picks, but I love prize picks. Only joking. It's like I do. See, this is why I like prize picks. The thing about prize picks is that, you know, you here you go. I keep saying it over and over. I could take Luka Domish, right? And I could say, hey, you know what? My man Luka is going to score more than 26.5 points today. LeBron James is going to have more than 7.5 rebounds, right? So what it is is what you do is you can pick two to six players, and if they will score more or less than their prize picks projections, you can win money. You can win up to 25 times your money on any entry, right? It's easy to do. So what do you do is you download the prize picks app and you go to prizepick.com to sign up and play daily fantasy sports. First time users can receive a hundred percent instant deposit match up to a hundred dollars with the promo code locked on. If you deposit a hundred dollars, prize picks will give you a hundred. If you deposit 50 prize picks will give you 50. Don't forget the inner promo code locked on at the sign up for an instant deposit matchup up to a hundred dollars i'm telling y'all do it today people definitely do it today absolutely absolutely make sure you all get out there and do it today thank you for making locked on 76ers uh your first listen of course here with us your first listen today for your second check out locked on sports today from the games that matter the most to the biggest stories in sports go beyond the scoreboard and behind the scenes with local experts and insights only Locked On can provide. Locked On Sports Today, available on this app, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcasts. All right, Keith, uh, through these, uh, I guess, almost, I guess, close to a year, just in terms of the trade went down in February. So overall, calendar-wise, close to a year since James Harden joined the Sixers last February at the trade deadline. And while they did get to the second round, they got to the second round. They still haven't gotten any further as a as a unit overall with James Harden. So uh the pairing of of Harden and Embiid sometimes it looks beautiful, sometimes it looks like it's tough to watch because each player needs the ball in his hands to be effective. And uh it, it just sometimes seems a little clunky with, with how things go with those two. So 
Um, he comes back Harden on Monday against the Houston Rockets. They lose the game. He has seven turnovers, and B had five before he fouled out with his 39 points. I believe Harden, what did he have, 21, 23 points in that game? 21. 21 uh, in, in the game. But, uh, again, you know, we saw some – Good basketball a little bit, right? When they when he was out and the ball was moving, to your point, uh, moving around and, and and getting to all the uh, all the, the teammates and all, and, and giving them a good opportunity to to really get some good looks. And now again, it just seems like it, it's always going to go back to that of if this pairing works, is this going to be enough? When you see others like Jason Tatum and and Jalen Brown getting to the NBA Finals a year ago. Giannis and Chris Middleton, and even including Drew Holiday uh, in that. And right here with this particular pairing, you know, there's still a lot of questions. Yeah, a, a, a lot of questions. And, and I think the thing is, you know, when we look at the Boston Celtics initially, mm-hmm. it was a struggle to me. I mean, and, and I compare it to those two. And, and what I mean by that is you have two guys who are alpha dogs, two guys who when they got their ball, when they, when they, they wanted the ball in their hands and they wanted to produce – and they figured out a way to play with each other, talking about Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown, right? Well, when you look at the 76ers, you know, when you, James Harden is typically a ball dominant player. Typically, you have, um, you know, defenders and three and D, three and D guys and, and rim runners, pick and rollers, you know, with them. Well, Joel Embiid is, is a ball dominant player who basically, even though he's a seven foot center, seven foot two, he likes roaming the perimeter. He likes facing the basket. He doesn't like picking and rolling. He likes picking and popping. And they also both stand on the left side of the high post or like in that area, right, perimeter. So it, it's kind of like one of those things where you look at it and you say the pieces just don't fit. Now, can they fit? Yeah, they can work on it. But the one thing is I feel like right now in order for it to work, Harden may have to be the guy that's going to sacrifice his game. Like he's going to have to be more of the facilitator, making sure the ball moves, making sure people get the ball in the right spot. And then, you know, Embiid may have to give some too, like as far as rolling to the basket more often, you know, doing certain things. Um, But, you know, right now, I have to admit, it just doesn't fit. Now, again, he only came back one game and they have time to work on it. Injuries, uh, hindered it but it's also you can't overlook the fact that the Sixers are two and five when these two guys are on the floor together and their two wins came against um a, a bad Chicago Bulls team and they came against the Indiana Pacers who are surprising but at the same time the Pacers were playing without uh their their top center and and, and stuff like that when they played that game so you know that's my two cents on it right now the pieces look like they just don't fit those two yeah. um and, and and as you said and I'll, I'll stick with this one that with Harden just coming back we've I've seen it I've seen a lot of uh, now with those two since he's played in playoffs included where we we see that there are some positives to it where they can work they're both both offensive uh, geniuses if you will and it, it, it can get in your way sometimes when one needs to ball just like the other one does need the basketball and, and that can be a problem but that's where you talked about with the sacrifice that comes into it Tobias Harris already sacrificed a lot uh being in that starting lineup with James Harden's arrival uh, Tyrese Maxey is still Tyrese Maxey but sometimes you know the ball goes the other way and that's just the nature of basketball where it finds a different player finds a different hand and maybe even just necessarily finds the hot hand or simply the, the better hand and I still give it time First of all, we have to give it time. He's not going anywhere, but I still give it time because they are still, you know, two very, very talented people. And that's the the end game of it all is to your point, the sacrifice of how much do you want to win? How much are you willing to win to make sure that this does in fact happen? And if I have to give up something if as part of my game, I, I can do that uh, for the better of the team and, and to make sure that that does in fact happen. The pick and rolls, the pick and pops, they both work. It's just a matter of Harden and the, the the holding of the basketball too long. And in the end, we know he's trying to do something with the basketball, but how long he holds the basketball in order to, you know, put low guys to sleep. He's 33 now, 32, 33 now. It's not the same. The explosion is not there. That lift is not there. It, that's just the nature of what it is. 
Father Time is is not on his side in that part of it where the explosion just isn't there. And that's where when we would talk about and point out those mid-range jump shots from about 15 to 17 feet is his friend. It's not just that step back three pointer anymore. That stuff is his friend also because he can't get to the he can get to the basket. It's just having to figure out a different way to score the basketball as he gets closer to the rim versus what he used to do as a younger player. And B, he's going to be him. And we've seen his assist numbers go up. We've seen him passing the ball. But it goes back to the first segment, being smarter with the basketball for both sides where you make better decisions to help your team win. Uh, final segment here, Keith, as we get ready to wrap this one up, Sixers are, since they return home from this three-game homestand, seven games here in Philadelphia. They're going to be home from the 6th to approximately the 24th uh, of December. So they're going to have some time to clean up some of the issues that they have and try to run together a, a winning streak before hitting the road again. So we'll do that next, the seven-game homestand, how important it is for this basketball team right here locked on 76ers. Let's talk about bet online, right? Who doesn't want to talk about bet online? Bet online is your number one source for sports betting info, stats, news, and analysis. Get the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there, from football to basketball to soccer to even esports. We've got it all at Bet Online. And if you love sports podcasts, you can find those at Bet Online as well. We're always the fastest and easiest way to get your betting fix. Head to the website today and use your mobile device um, to learn more. Bet online where the game starts. All right. The game starts on Friday for the 76ers as they host the Los Angeles Lakers in game one of the seven game homestand. And Keith, there are a lot of good teams on this homestand. There are some wins that you look at and say these are some layups for them. But at this point, at their at this stage of their um their season, there are there are no easy ones when you're 12 and 12 right here you you just simply need as sixers to start piling up some wins man all right and and, and showing who you really are uh, if this is not who you really are as a 500 team and we know maxi being out and Harden and just coming back plays a part in it but a seven game homestand should be beneficial to them lakers clippers golden state sacramento toronto on this trip and then you have i believe the pistons also come to town and one more that is escaping me uh, off the top of my head but with it all man they they really have an opportunity here to come back home settle in and protect their home floor and pick up some wins pick up some important wins so they can get back into that groove of just simply winning basketball games and not have to worry about uh, what they've been feeling as of late with these losses yeah, I agree with you 100 percent. But, you know, I also think that this is going to be a, a key stretch and we, we keep saying it for everything. But like you, you you did name the teams like the Lakers. And when you look at the Lakers, they played on Friday. You know, this is a team that has, has shown some improvement. You know, Anthony Davis is on the tear recently. Joel does what Joel do. He typically dominates him. Right. And then after that, they, they have uh, the Charlotte Hornets. You know, the Sixers defeat uh, and the Sixers lost to him earlier this year at which in Charlotte's home. It was one of the bad losses we talked about. From there, they played the Sacramento Kings on the 13th. Sacramento is one of the most exciting teams in the league right now. Then you have Golden State. We already know about Golden State. Then you have the Toronto Raptors on the 19th. The Raptors and the Sixers have that little rivalry going on. The Pistons, and then you end up with uh, – uh, the Clippers. So, you know, when I'm looking at this one, the only one that I can say, I can say that is a bona fide victory is the Pistons. And the reason why I'm saying that is because we all know that the Pistons, you know, one of the worst teams in the league, but it's also the Sixers are going to be at home having off day, this and that. But outside of that, D, I'm looking at these games and, you know, great for the confidence boost, but I can't look at these teams right now and say, Hey, the 76ers are just going to go out there and 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 come out with, you know, go go what six and one or or or, or five and two or or even you know three and three. I mean, is or, or four and three. It, it, it's one of those things where I think it's going to be tough for the Sixers. It it is, man. And right now at home, they are seven and five 
and uh, they are above 500 right now at home. And you know, normally we look at them and, and teams would come to town in the more recent past where we would say, you come to Philadelphia, that's an L for the visitors. Not so much these last couple of seasons. And they have to get back to that. They were below 500 uh, before, uh, and they, they found themselves again, lifting themselves up back into that, that win column at two games over 500 at home. So a real chance not only to, to improve the road record, but overall – just to, to, to add to these wins, but to give themselves some more confidence that they are who they thought they were uh, as a basketball team this season. It doesn't stop after these seven, but clearly this is a good starting point for them to get back into the, their winning ways and get back into the right side of things for them. Tyrese Maxey, I don't know when he's coming back, but that may be around the timeline at some point during this homestand that he will return. So this is important for them. This is this is, could be a point where we look at back in the season and say this is uh, that seven game homestand, which is the longest of the season, uh, was a good stretch for them to help turn things back around for the 76ers to get back on the right track uh, for this season. Uh, I want to thank everybody for hanging out with us on this uh, on this Wednesday. Uh, Keith Pompey, Devon Gibbons, and we thank you for making Locked On 76 as your first listen for your next. Check out the Locked On Sports Today podcast, the biggest stories of the day, plus instant reactions, big game recaps, and the take of the day. Available on the Odyssey app, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcast. Keith, you mind letting the good folks know where they can find us? Listen, you can find us wherever you get your podcast at. Make sure you go and you get Locked On 76ers podcast, right? Do that. And when you go to the YouTube, um, when you go to our YouTube channel, make sure you click on um, the Liberty Bell and you become our latest subscriber. But make sure you do yourself a favor and go to the Divine Giving Show on 97.5 FM. You know, it, this is a show that runs Monday through Friday, typically from 6 to 10 um, p.m. Tonight, D is going to be on from 1030 p.m. to midnight. So make sure you check in with it. Also, do yourself a favor and follow my man on Twitter because he lets y'all know what time he's going to be on the air. And it's at DivineG975. Follow me on Twitter at Pompey on Sixers, P-O-M-P-E-Y on Sixers, DivineG, D-O-V-O-N, capital G, 975 on Twitter. But also you can read my articles in the Philadelphia Inquirer. I did six hours of radio on Tuesday. Six. Wow. That was a long day. Heck yeah. Night. Long night. <laughs> <laughs> it went well, though. It went well. Yeah, we, we uh, had a good time. Well, listen, man, thanks. Uh, we'll uh, get back together on Thursday. We hope you all join us. Keith, have a great rest of your day, and I'll talk to you tomorrow. All right, my man. Peace. See you.